Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got a ton of news and a really good video that I'll be working on, so I thought I'd show you my ugly mug. Either way, today, AMD is fixing USB issues, the first RX 6700 XT benchmarks, mineral oil cooled mining rigs, first look at the upcoming Intel gaming GPU, some bad news, and then some good news. First up for today, AMD announced about a month ago that they were going to be working on some USB connectivity issues that, quote, a small number of users were experiencing, specifically with the 500 series chipset motherboards. Once again, that was about a month ago. This, well, 22 days to be exact. Well... AMD looks to have found the issue, and it looks like there's going to be a BIOS update set to fix it in April. So not too much longer now. It is great that they saw it. Um, it was basically for anyone who were having some issues with USB, and I know PCI Express uh, 4.0, some of them would have to like turn it off to fix the issue, and then uh, USB 2.0 had some issues. Issues with the USB in general with 500 series boards. Either way, like I said, looks like they found the issue and they are going to be putting a fix up. So rejoice if you've been having issues with that. Of course, with all this new hardware coming out, it can get tough to know what to buy. That's why I offer my PC hardware suggestions at kit.co slash gamermelt. In it, I go over why you may want to buy one thing over another, from GPUs to CPUs and more, as well as provide tips when buying certain components. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Plus, when you make a purchase, it helps the channel out at no additional cost to you. So don't wait and visit kit.co slash gamermeld or click the link in the description below. Next up, we have some of the first benchmarks on the upcoming RX 6700 XT. And these are actually third party benchmarks that were um, apparently sent to WCCF Tech. Either way, let's go over them. First up, we have 1440p gaming performance. Now, remember that AMD is actually, they are specifically touting this as a 1440p uh, gaming GPU. That was their goal, hitting 1440p at a decent price. And as you can see, they did pretty well. This is actually versus the uh, 3060 Ti and 3070, which is exactly right in between where this card is priced. So we can see right here, both of the, let's see, Assassin's Creed, it's flat crushing things, Battlefield 5, though Andy normally does do pretty well in that, Borderlands 3, it's winning Call of Duty. It does take a little bit of an L versus the 3070 and 20, uh, with, in Cyberpunk 2077. Death Stranding it loses, comes back in Dirt 5. Loses. I mean, this definitely looks like trading blows. I mean, you can see Hitman 2, Hitman 3, and quite a bit of these it wins, then it loses some. And, and it does lose. Um, Fortnite does fantastic in, more or less a toss-up, Far Cry 5. But I will say at least based on these numbers, it's looking really good very competitive with the fact that it can beat a card that msrp now really quickly i know there's going to be a ton of comments that are like yeah if you could buy it at msrp and and i get that although i will be kind of sort of getting to that um in a few but i get it trust me this is one of those in a perfect world or think of this more as when everything kind of calms down and we actually get to see cards in MSRP. I mean, this is the intended price. This is the suggested price. The simple fact is that there's a ton more demand. So because of that price is going to go up, especially with such a short supply. The simple fact is that demand cannot be reached right now. And because of that, prices are going wild. But I do want to focus on MSRP just because uh, if we look at the pricing now, I mean, it's all over the place. If you're willing to spend that kind of money, you, you, you probably don't really care about price to performance. So when we look at that with the fact that this is placed right in between the 3060 Ti and 3070, it is certainly looking like a good buy. I mean, the fact that it can beat the 3070 for $50 less. It's more or less neck and neck. Obviously, the 3070 wins plenty of the benchmarks as well. But, um, you know, and that is given this is correct. We'll have to wait uh, until those do come out. So we can actually have a ton of third party benchmarks. So at least going off of this, it looks pretty good. Now, 
Let's move over to ray tracing, and this part is pretty interesting. As you can see, believe it or not, AMD is actually more or less trading blow. Well, I don't want to say trading blows. They lose more than they win. Absolutely. But when they lose, typically it's not too bad, except, let's see, Rift Breaker, not looking great. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, not great. But then World of Warcraft, fantastic. Fortnite doing a little bit better, Dirt 5, and and really with the Dirt 5 one, I know for a fact that that's one that AMD has worked really close with them for, so I really am kind of wondering if this perception that Ampere is purely better than um, RDNA 2 at ray tracing, I'm really wondering if this is true, if it isn't true, just because cards were made specifically with NVIDIA in mind. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, the DirectX um, is an open platform, and that is true, but there almost certainly seems to be at least some kind of optimization going on here. So at least if you ask me, it, it does look like AMD could come back and could do really well if and when games are optimized for their ray tracing cores. So we will have to wait and see on that, but at least so far with this looks pretty good. And let's move on. This is a weird one. Okay, so Ethereum uh, looks to be going back up. So does Bitcoin. It looked like they had tumbled. They had gone down. We're talking, I think it was uh, Bitcoin had gone down over $10,000. Uh, I think we were actually looking at like $15,000, something like, like really big numbers. And just as Bitcoin goes down, because they are the largest, the other um, coins typically follow suit. Well, Ethereum did, but unfortunately, they are going right back up, nearing their all-time high. So I guess I'm not too surprised by this, but the thing about uh, mining is just the fact that there's a really big balance. You don't ever really see a lot of overclocking when it comes to mining, specifically because when you overclock, uh, it's all about performance per watt. And when you overclock, that loses quite a bit of that. Yeah, you may get a little bit more uh, mega hashes out of it, but at the end of the day, um, you're draining way more energy, so it isn't worth it. So it is really odd, but basically we can see right here a mining setup with custom water cooling rigs. And even further, when we go down here, it's mineral oil cooled. Ugh. That's just absurd. Uh, I mean, I will say that at least here, uh, you know what? I may take that back. It looks like there's a ton of graphics cards over there. I was going to say that many graphics cards. You know, I mean, I, I get it. You know, someone who maybe has theirs and does a few graphics cards, you know, I personally don't really think that's that big of a deal. It's just people who buy a thousand. But I do have some good news coming up. So hold on for that. Next up, we have a pretty interesting one from Raja Kaduri. He actually tweeted this out. And as you can see, it says from 2012 to 2021, uh, they're in the same Intel Folsom lab, uh, basically where he was before uh, or well, when he was at Apple back then getting hands on pre-production crystal. Well, nine years later, playing with the GPU, that's 20 times faster now. He doesn't mention specifically that this is a gaming GPU, but he leaves some clues. For one, um, well, first I will say we can kind of look at it. This right here is the GPU board. This is the uh, testing board that they have. This obviously, it looks like a CPU cooler, but it's for the uh, GPU. And then you can see they have power going to the test board there. It's being sent over here and they have power specifically to the motherboard, but um, pretty interesting. But back to this, someone pointed out, and I do think this is pretty interesting. Clearly, this is 3D Mark. And uh, I don't have the blown up photo, but it actually shows that it has the one specifically for RTX installed, which tells us because DG1 does not have ray tracing cores that this is almost certainly the DG2 gaming GPU, or at least one of rumored to be three gaming GPUs that are coming out. Anyway, that is interesting and it does point to a fairly soon release within probably the next few months. Next up, I have some bad news. Now, really quickly, I do wanna say um, from what we've heard, uh, I believe it was Linus who stated that AMD plans to release 
6700 XTs uh, every week on their site. So gamers can actually get those at MSRP. So definitely make sure to check that out. And I will also have links in the description. Maybe AIB partners will do that. Um, on new egg and things like that so definitely make sure to check those out that's going to be releasing on the 18th um be there as early as you can check it out i'm also likely going to be doing a live stream but anyway back to the story as you can see here he says if you condense the information of various board partners oh and this is igor's lab and he definitely has quite a bit of contacts with aib partners so i will say his uh rumors and things like that I would definitely take more seriously than quite a bit of others. Either way, he says from that information from partners and distributors, he is seeing a trend depending on the manufacturer and model, only a few pieces for Germany to a few thousand for the EU as a whole. Meaning once again, the 6700 XT is looking like it's going to be launching with very few numbers. Now, there, I do believe that there was a story not long ago that told us there would potentially be more than before, but this is not looking good. We're talking the whole of the EU here. Maybe they're going to be sending more to the US or wherever you may be, but it's not looking good. So once again, make sure to check out the links that I have. Those are affiliate links. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out, if you wouldn't mind. Now, next up for today is the great news that at least according to some early numbers from miners who were apparently, allegedly, able to get a hold of the RX 6700 XT, according to this uh, blog, it's gonna offer around 43 mega hashes per second. Now, that may sound pretty great, but Compared to literally first-gen RDNA RX 5700 XT, it gets 54.3. So the brand new 6700 XT that is absolutely going to cost more, except for when we come to eBay and things like that, it may not, it's getting less than last gen's GPU. So that is great news. It's not doing as well, and the reason for that is likely because, as you can see here, RDNA is made specifically for gaming. Their last uh, architecture was more of a general purpose architecture, which is actually why AMD's GPUs did better most of the time in mining back during Vega and RX 580 and things like that. And I do believe the further we get into RDNA, the more you know, the, the more architectural updates to it, it will likely get worse and worse. Now, with that said, I will mention that NVIDIA's Ethereum, um, the, the algorithm that they have that hurts performance in the 3060 Ti and rumored to be upcoming GPUs as well, I will definitely say that that is worse, but with the fact that this is architecturally, not software-wise, the reason why it's doing worse it does look better in in a way just because if miners are able to ever get past that software it'll you know make the 3060 ti significantly better again but this is an architectural reason why it's doing worse than last gen's 5700 xt so yeah pretty good news there though it is pretty sad that it looks like the number of uh, rx 6700 xts being delivered is pretty low so while that does it for today, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And also make sure to check out the Gamer Mail Discord server if you like talking all things gaming hardware. And as always, have a great day.